Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump held dueling rallies Wednesday, just shy of four weeks until Election Day. Clinton rallied supporters in Colorado, while Trump was in Florida. Both candidates wasted no time going after the other. She shouldn't be allowed to run for president. She shouldn't be allowed, I'm telling you, she should not be allowed to run for president. Based on her crimes, she should not be allowed to run for president. It's time for a new direction. Our movement is about rebuilding our country, reuniting our citizens, and revitalizing the spirit of our nation. I'm asking you to believe in America once again. I'm asking you to believe in the American dream once again. His campaign, his campaign said today that they're going to use a, quote, scorched earth strategy for the remaining four weeks of this race. Now that just shows how desperate they are. That's all they have left. Pure negativity, pessimism, and we're not going to let Donald Trump get away with it, are we? With me now on set is political reporter for the Washington Post, Philip Bump. Hey, Philip, uh, let me just start off with this scorched earth campaign sure. plan. Uh, it's one thing to fire up the base, but do you think that it might have the effect of actually stopping undecided voters from voting for Hillary Clinton? Yeah, I mean, I think that's exactly what the point is, right? Donald Trump knows he has this core base of support. It's what got him through the primaries. He has something like 35% of the electorate. It's not going anywhere for him, right? If he can push Hillary Clinton's vote down as well, then he can actually run against her. He's shown that he can't actually expand his base outward substantially. So if he can get Hillary Clinton supporters in particular to be disinterested in coming out to vote in November, I think that's what he's banking on as his best shot. Of course, a, a lot of folks, though, are also looking down ballot including House Speaker Paul Ryan. So um, what could this strategy potentially do here for the Republican Party? I think it's really tough, right? I mean, we're already seeing that Donald Trump is trailing pretty substantially. I mean, right now, the real clear politics polling average, Hillary Clinton's ahead of almost as much as she was right after the conventions when she had this massive lead and everyone was talking about can Donald Trump survive, right? So he, she, he, she's already far ahead, which is bad news for the Republican Party. Donald Trump is now attacking the Republican Party directly, in part because he's still trying to mobilize that same base and he's not, you know, there are these moderate Republicans who he hasn't shown any ability to bring into his camp over the long term. It's bad news for the Republican Party. They need people to come out and vote. The good news for the Republican Party, though, is, of course, that Republicans do vote more regularly than do Democrats. And so that is something that they always have, an arrow that's always in their quiver, but it still is it's risky. But in each of these down-ballot races, then, I mean, there's got to be some tough political calculus going on and tricky political calculus at that. Right, yeah. So, I, you know, I've spoken in the past with folks from the RNC that, you know, have insisted this is Donald Trump and everyone down the ballot. That's who we're going to be uh, targeting. But you look at a state like New Hampshire, right? I mean, in New Hampshire, there is a Republican woman who is on the ballot for Senate. Women are not enthusiastic about Donald Trump. You know, Donald, women especially, you know, there's a poll, NBC Wall Street Journal poll that came out after that tape that came out last Friday that showed people, you know, women in particular moving dramatically away from Donald Trump. It's a tough pitch if you're in New Hampshire and you're a Republican trying to tell folks to vote both for someone for Senate and Donald Trump. Uh, I want to move to Utah because you wrote sure. a really interesting piece uh, on a recent poll out of Utah showing a tied race in that state. Explain for us what we should actually take away sure. from that. But well, we should always be very careful about taking too much away from one poll. Mm -hmm. But I think what we've seen can, over the course of the past several months is Utah is a different sort of state. It is a different sort of conservative Republican that is in Utah for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. So there is this new poll that shows that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are essentially tied there. And this guy, Evan McMullen, who people may not have even heard of, a third party candidate, he's actually pretty close. He's within shouting distance of the two of them. Uh, you know, and there are a lot of reasons why that's the case. But, for example, after the tape came out last week, the most conservative people who came out and spoke out against Donald Trump at that point were people from Utah, were members of the U Utah uh, delegation in Congress. There is something that is, makes Utah different. You know, part of it is the fact that it's a very Mormon population there. But that is another sign that Donald Trump has not been able to expand that core base outwards. Otherwise, Utah would be a gimme. But it's not because he's, he has not been able to show that he can do that. So potentially a cautionary tale for other states, maybe? Maybe, yeah. I mean, I mean, Utah is very, I mean, it's very unique mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a cautionary tale for Donald Trump, whether or not he chooses to listen to it. Uh, well, as you know, both candidates have been heavily promoting a voter turnout. A New York Times right. report shows that early voting in states like North Carolina and Florida are heavily favoring Hillary Clinton. Should right. Trump's campaign be concerned about this at this point? Here we are, right. 27 or so days away. 
they should be desperately concerned, right? But the problem is that they've never paid any attention to get out the vote stuff. They've continually poo-pooed it. You know, in the past, again, as I said, Republicans vote more regularly than Democrats. Republicans have not traditionally had to rely on this, but they should have been doing a lot of work on this. Hillary Clinton's beating them on the ground. The case I always used to use, I always like to use is Iowa. Look at the Iowa caucus. Donald Trump went in the Iowa caucus with the lead, but he lost because Ted Cruz outworked him. Hillary Clinton's outworking him now. It's that ground game, right? Everybody talks about. That's it. All right. Philip Bump, so good to see you. Thanks so much.